not only you can do whatever is in the machine, but you can get external, other external devices and connect them here and feed uh, the signal in and out to apply other types of noise reductions or encoders. Um, conventional line inputs and outputs are here. This is the memory playback for the remotes. I suspect you can plug a remote here, a uh, wired remote from, for example, the same remote that would go with an Akimichi Dragon. A little battery compartment. Seems to be a couple of AA batteries in here. So probably for the RAM memory system. 120 to 220 volt selector. And uh, the tag here I'm specifying uh, its voltage capabilities, where it's manufactured, which is Japan, um, and its serial number, which is uh, 03241. All right, taking a look inside, let me unplug this unit. It's a really nice layout. They, they went, really went through, through great lengths to make it easier for technicians. The first thing you'll see is that these boards here are secured with just two simple screws, and then they flip up to give you access to the internals, including the drive system right there, the power supply, and the fuse board and the drive controllers. It's a really nice setup. Over here we can see the drive mechanism has some commonality with other tape decks including the Dragon. Looks like they're using the exact same box here that for the azimuth that they would on all the other tape decks. There's a motor in there and this cable actuator that moves the head for azimuth adjustment. That's this guy right here. So the motor here sort of uses this slide cable to, to move the head, which is wraps all the way down and to the bottom of the unit. You can see some of the motors that we discussed before. Here's one for the reels, and no, that's for the reels, and this is for the capstan. It does have a, it's a dual capstan machine using asynchronous sized reels, which are not really that visible on camera, but they're buried in there. You would see a belt going from this motor to the two capstan wheels, which are pretty large and different in size. And over here is the cam mechanism, including the cam motor, which is buried down there as well, which um, moves the entire head assembly up and down to engage with the tape. Um, so it seems to be a, a dual layer uh, drive mechanism. On the Dragon, it adds a third layer of complexity to it, although I do see half a board here that might be considered a third layer. So to service this unit, you'd have to pull the screws from the front and essentially remove this entire drive mechanism and take all the three layers apart to get to the belts, rollers, etc. So quite an endeavor to service these machines. So as I mentioned before, that is the power supply, fairly well-sized power supply. That'll be our first bit of troubleshooting to so test all the voltages right there, those colored wires. The fuse block is here and setting fuses for different voltages and protection for different parts of the power supply. And then another thing that was is neat is that they've taken the care to label all the connectors. Here's CN41. Uh, that's really nice. Um, the schematics always refer to a connector placement somewhere and rather than have to kind of identify them on the board or cross-reference a schematic, they've labeled the wires themselves, which is really nice. There's a nice attention to detail here. They've protected this pass through with plastic so that these wires don't get frayed. And look at this bundle of wires, what a mess. You can see why repairing these machines is so costly. So this is the fluorescent uh, display box. In here are the electronics for the VU meter. And that must be its feed from a power supply and this is the feed from the signals. So we'll have to troubleshoot that as well. And then you can see it's a card based system. These are your Three cards in there. Uh, this one appears to be record equalization, detector, noise reduction for record, and noise reduction for playback. So it is, in fact, a card based system. You can see them here individually. And then on the back, I noticed right away this is a hinged uh, rear panel. Again, super nice for technicians. So if we lift this slightly, we can drop this panel to a certain degree. And disconnect the fluorescent display. 
from here, yeah. So here we go, let me give you a back view of it. This is a Nakamichi 1000 completely with all its doors open. So quite a bit of kit. Over here we can appreciate the transformer which is sizable for a tape deck. These got smaller and smaller as, uh, as time went by. Power supply with a heat sink surface bolted to the rear plate. Seems to be a heat sink here for the rectifiers and then here for the MOSFETs or the power supply transistors and the back of all the connectors. And these are the three noise reduction cards we mentioned. All right, so what does this do? This essentially, Nakamichi claims that a tape deck at this level is able to reproduce or give you a bandwidth response of about 25 kilohertz, which was unheard of at the time for a tape deck. So we'll be verifying that soon, going through a full restoration process here at SkyFi Audio, where um, we'll get it in tip-top shape, hopefully. We do have a nice stash of Nakamichi parts, although it's getting smaller every time we finish a Dragon or a CR7. Um, so hopefully we have enough parts to, to bring this to market and, and be able to show it off. Um, it did come in a really nice case. I'll show you that in a second, and a rack mount configuration. Um, it's probably not a standard rack mount configuration in terms of spacing, but it can certainly be made to fit in a, in a rack. And it's got these really cool professional looking there's handles as well. Came with a nice Nakamichi cleaning kit. There's a nice little added bonus here. I'm sure it's all dried up and not useful, but pretty cool, along with a Nakamichi polishing cloth. And the case is uh, here. Real nice finish. It's got a real wood veneer uh, finish and a nice gloss, as you can see there. Got a few blemishes that we'll try to take care of, but you know, when you put that thing in its case, it really looks uh, outstanding. So, is this machine better than a Dragon? Well, I guess the our test equipment will will tell us that story. Uh, it is certainly very capable and a very neat PC, piece of equipment. Um, I can see why they're, they're, it's desirable and valuable in the market. It's probably the best of the 70s, I would say, in terms of a tape deck, and at least on paper. Um, one last thing to show you, uh, Vintage Knob, one of the best websites out there. has a great exploded view of the mechanism of the drive system here. You can see the azimuth motor here with that belt that I was telling you about that manipulates the azimuth angle. That is the the angle of the head against the tape, which results in the proper frequency response. And, and then up here, you can kind of see the machine a little better lit up. You can see the buttons, how they light in the background on them and the display with all the features lit up. That is uh, the Vintage Knob, amazing website. Be sure to visit it. Uh, the vintage knob.org is the exact URL. So that's it. Um, again, this is SkyFi Audio. You can visit us online on our website where you'll see mm, hundreds and hundreds of products like this Nakamichi 1000. SkyFiAudio.com is the site. And um, if you appreciate these videos and we're and you dig them, please subscribe. That'll keep us motivated to to take the time to make these.